Leo. Hello, Leo, and this is your June forecast for 2013. And you've been running around, haven't you? A <laughs> really busy year uh, last month in May uh, as far as your career. Really picking up the threads. Why? Because in, in March and April, you were busy elsewhere. There was other things occupying you fully, totally. So this month here of May, if you're listening to it um, uh, on the May side of your forecast, uh, you'll see that you're still busy kind of running around there. But as we come now into June, it's more like, okay, it's not going to take a back seat. It's just going to shift the dial, so to speak, because here in May, it was all about laying some new foundations here uh, for your career, which now you're going to take out and you're going to start networking it. Okay, so June is going to be about groups, groups of people um, that can help you, stimulate you, new friends also coming in uh, through these uh, groups as far as i can see because it's like like-minded people getting together talking discussing um brainstorming together and supporting one another uh, of how to actually uh, bring these new concepts and ideas out and also how you could even you know make some money on it too uh income streams so there is a lot of busyness, and I also see that there uh, there's some uh, males around you, men, uh, that can somehow be uh, very uh, supportive as well. And I see your own inner drive, your own inner Marzi drive, kind of getting out there, you know, and, and doing the dance between these people. And um, I won't say aggressively, you know, going out and getting uh, contacts, but yeah, there is a little of that too. But, but I see it more being uh, purposefully willful rather than aggressive. I don't like that word anyway. So, um, uh, but, but you know what I mean. It's like you're not sitting at home just thinking about doing this. You're actually taking initiation on many things. You're putting yourself out there. You're expanding uh, your scope, your field. Uh, and I see people getting involved too. So whatever it is you got on your dish right now, people like to hear it and they want more of it. So I see you kind of like supplying this uh, in one way or another. Now Jupiter is there to the end of the month. It's been in this sector for you this whole last year uh, from 2012, summer of 2012. And it's leaving here on the 25th, um, I believe, uh, yeah, 25th. So you want to make the best out of this very little last phase that you have uh, where it can give you that extra little oomph. And what I like to say about planets uh, leaving a sign, that they won't really uh, leave fully without giving you a gift at the doorstep, you know, because it's like graduation. You, you've gone through that whole scenario in that sector where it's been working and transiting. And so it's like when, when it completes something, you can expect something coming. So you want to kind of pay attention around the 25th and give it like a week or two because sometimes it doesn't come before after it's out fully of that house into the next house. So that can be a little bit of a surprise for you as well. It's going to be moving into your 12th house of the subconsciousness. So, and it's going to be there for a full year to 2014 next summer. And uh, so it's going to be resting there. You know, it's a 12 year cycle. So for 11 years, you've been out there doing your thing, you know, and now Jupiter says, you know what, I'm just going to go sub. And you might feel that, wow, you can't really access that Jupiter because that's always that good support that we have out there externally uh, through friends, colleagues, you know, bosses, supervisors, family, whatever it is. You can't really access because it's not going to be out there. But what you're going to find out, and we're going to talk more about that next month, um, Leo, but where you're going to find Jupiter, which is the planet of joy and expansion and abundance, you're going to find it right in here. Okay? So she's going to move within. She's going to internalize. And you, maybe for the first time for many of you, will actually become your best, your own very best friend. 
forever. You're going to merge. You're going to be one. You're going to align yourself, tune in, listen to, uh, and actually hear the guidance coming from her, from Jupiter, which is also one of your, your guardian angels are going to be there as well. So, so don't freak when you can't really find it out there because where you want to go for that uh, advice is always in here and listen and attune to the advice that Jupiter gives. More on that later. But for right now, anyway, uh, as we go off top of the month, uh, it's starting out on the first with the Sun and Uranus, their sextile. So it's going to start off with a bang of something unexpected. I uh, feel it's a good surprise, unexpected, because it is a sextile. It is a good one. And then the third, there's some communication uh, with Neptune and Saturn, which is positive. And Neptune um, and Saturn for you will be from the 4th house and the 8th house to uh, Mercury in the 12th. So something within your foundation, your platform, your home, um, or what you perceive being your anchor, your, your security, your roots, you know, securing your roots, so to speak. There's going to be some talks here with Mercury on it. And then Neptune has to do with other people's money. So uh, the communication there, you could be communicating maybe perhaps something about grants, uh, loans, uh, or commissions, or royalties. But, but see, between these, it's all looking pretty good. Um, good time to, to write up any papers or put in any applications for that, for example. And then on the 7th, uh, we also have Venus doing the same thing here with Neptune and with Saturn. And Venus at the time will be also in your 12th house. Subconscious, longings, yearnings, you know, what you value, what you love, what you desire, what you want but can't have because it, it's hiding now in the 12th house. It's not out there. Okay, can't access that Venus out there. Right now for this month, you've got to go within and reapply those same values that you're looking for to yourself. Okay, you've got to bring up that love within, self-love. And that, Nep that Venus there is going to be trying that Neptune in the 8th house. And Neptune, Venus, that's love and idealism and what we really truly, truly want, uh, feeling a little cut off from it, may hurt a little bit. But uh, it's also going deep because the 8th house is ruled by Pluto, you know, so there's intimacy things here. Uh, that Neptune's in the intimate house of longing and yearning for something that's transformative uh, for you romantically, Venus in the 12th, right? Uh, and then Saturn, which is, you want it because why it's transforming that Plutonian Neptunian energy in the 8th house of intimacy is transforming or trying to transform how you see yourself, your own values, you know, at the bottom of your chart, 4th house Saturn, who am I, where am I at, what are my roots here, and that's in the house of Pluto, or Scorpio, which is ruled by Pluto too. So that just tells me that a lot of you uh, Leos, whether you're male or female, you're looking at something going on intimately in your life and how that is transforming you and why it's leaving you wanting more you know especially now in this month where you might feel things a little cut off and that might have happened here already i would say um in uh in may actually earlier on maybe end of uh, uh end of yeah end of uh, april here coming into june kind of was doing this but then as we, we come in here throughout May, it's just passed through this 11th house of where you're just out there socializing, okay? It's out there with friends, new groups, meeting new people. But it's not giving you that intimacy that you really wanted. And this is what's going to hit home now. So you were able to kind of do that surface thing if you needed to in, in May. But June is going to bring that deep longing back that wanting because Saturn is wanting you to transform the roots of your very core, your inner being on the love side. So enough about that. Uh, we have a drive uh, here on the 17th. Uh, Mars is going to be aligning with Uranus. So I see you taking new steps, bold steps nonetheless. Bold steps to kind of turn something totally upside down, uh, to go in there and revamp it and redo something 
renew it perhaps and it might be a little shocking to you uh, because yes this could come from the outside it could come from someone to you but it kind of looks more like you're here uh, taking the driver's wheel the steering wheel and initiating this change initiating something to turn around so it can work better not just for you but perhaps for the whole situation then we have the 19th and 20th beautiful romantic days uh, could be uh, because Mercury is going to be communicating with Venus so there's a love talk there there's a mutual understanding and it is in the 12th house so it's really feeding that inner soul of yours and uh, and it kind of renews hope uh, too because the Sun is conjunct Jupiter here on this day also oh, on the 19th so within that those couple of days so something is going to come back together it's going to gel the Sun is moving into uh, um, cancer excuse me the Sun's moving into cancer on the 20th Jupiter is moving into Cancer on the 25th. So now you're going to have four planets in your 12th house. That's the universe telling you it's time to kind of step back and listen to your needs. Now you've been running around like crazy there in May and June, but you know, it's like coming towards the end of the month into July. You're really going to feel like you're pooped, you know, so it's time to put your feet up. Little time for meditation. Go sub, listen to some meditation music, and, and just go off on some astral journeys would be soothing, very soothing for you. I'm going to be putting together some meditation music, so maybe that can, you know, do you all some good. And then we also have Venus going into your sign here on the 27th. So it's going to be climbing over your ascendance into your first house. And that's something that will make you radiate like the empress. If you're a male, you will be the emperor um, and attracting a lot of female energy. But, but yeah, it's that time of the year. And we have that for a couple of weeks each year when Venus goes into our first house. Uh, and so you're going to have that. And when that happened, well, then also Mercury is going retrograde. Yep, it's that time of year again. Uh, it happens a few times a year and it's going to last three and a half weeks. That Mercury for you uh, this month will be in your uh, 12th house. Uh, so I don't see you signing too many papers or contracts or anything, but if you should do, be careful. And I'd say wait, you know, to get out there in July before you do any of that. Um, yeah, I just pressed up. You know, we, we do, I have mentioned to the other ones here, and I'm going to mention it for you too. Um, I don't normally get into a lot of details astrologically or anything, but um, on the, our charts here this month, we have what we call a kite, and it's the formation of the planets looking like a kite. And kind of like this, where we're going to have very beautiful alignments. we got the Sun and Jupiter on top, which is you, you know, your essence and Jupiter, which is expansive uh, and it's joyful and it just brings out all that abundant, beautiful energy that you are. And on each side, it also rules your, your, your faith, okay? Very strongly, strong faith is coming through on that day. And it's being supported there with Neptune and Saturn. Uh, Neptune is saying dream, you know, and, and since it's connected to Jupiter, Jupiter does nothing small. So Jupiter is saying to Neptune, hey, dream big. While you're at it, you know, big dreams. And normally, you know, we want to feel responsible and it's like, oh, no, that's too big of a dream. Can't do that, right? Uh-uh. This time, Saturn, which normally is the one who places restrictions on us and will limit us, is also in a very good uh, aspect here. And Saturn is there to say, hey, go for it, girl. You know this is the time I'm here right behind you dream big I will anchor it and Saturn gives us you know the authority and the sense of know-how and inner security and strength and then at the bottom of this you know which is holding up the, the sides and the top is the full moon this month you know so the kite is perfectly balanced great anchor down here to hold up the dream the vision the hope and everything um, and that full moon is there with Pluto within that first you know first day those 24 hours there um, and that full moon will strip away the old that's what Pluto does whatever no longer serves a purpose it's like okay let's peel that off 
it's draining my energy, I can't do that. You know, so, so peel away what no longer serves you. And then the beauty of, of Pluto, which I, I totally love, is the sense of renewal, transformation, the new you emerging. Talk about coming out of a cocoon. You know, now with wings, this is what Pluto wants you to do. And especially in a formation, a kite formation like this, supporting you, the sun, say, the universe saying, it's time for you to break loose, break free. Do what you've always been wanting to do. And, and let go of all those old voices all the way back childhood, throughout school, teachers, principal, whoever said you couldn't do something could be your partners, husbands, or whatever, who said you couldn't do something. You know what? You're going to prove the world the opposite right now, Leo. You're going to go and you're going to go out there and say, watch me. Okay? So I'll leave you with that. You go show them. And as always, it's always very inspiring to speak with you, Leo. I get all these feedback, comments, emails from you, and that just keeps me going here. So. Um, until next month, take care and I will speak with you again. So listen to your moon sign and rising sign on the way out and I will see you soon. Bye now.